Section 1.3 is titled 12 Basic Functions. Uh, in this section, we're going to introduce slash review uh, what the 12 basic functions are and with the goal being being able to state some characteristics of each one, um, like its domain, its range, is it continuous or not continuous, does it have asymptotes, symmetry, uh, those sorts of things. Um, and then we'll also look at a few ways that we can combine some of these 12 basic functions to create new functions. The first of these 12 basic functions is your basic linear function. It's called the identity function, f of x equals x or y equals x. Um, it has a domain and a range that are both the same. Domain and range are negative infinity to positive infinity. Um, other information about the function, it is always a continuous function. Um, this particular showing of the function, the identity function itself, taking on no transformations or anything like that, um, is an odd function. Notice it has symmetry about the origin, makes it an odd function. Um, doesn't have any asymptotes, doesn't have any minimum or maximum values. Um, that's kind of it about our identity function. Next of our basic functions is called the squaring function, sometimes called quadratic function. Uh, its graph is called a parabola. It is the function y equals x squared, or f of x equals x squared. Its domain and range well, its domain will always be negative infinity to positive infinity. Its range, however, um, will not always be the same. Uh, it depends on if the graph is shifted up or down, or if it's reflected upside down. But in this particular case, what we're looking at is a range of 0 to infinity. Square bracket on 0 because the graph does actually touch 0 down here at its bottom point. Uh, all squaring functions are continuous, so it is a continuous function. This particular squaring function, the basic one, is an even function, meaning that it's got symmetry about the y-axis. If we were to fold on the y-axis, the points would match up on either side. And all squaring functions have either a minimum or a maximum value. Now this one has a point that's at the bottom and then it goes up forever but it's flipped upside down it could have a point at the top. Um, so it's either going to have a minimum or a maximum value. This one in particular, the basic one, has a minimum. Okay, next let's look at the cubing function or sometimes called just the cubic function. Um, looks like this. We've no doubt seen this one before. Uh, it's got a domain and range that that we're familiar with. Its domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. Its range is the same. Okay, That's it for this basic function. If we make it more complex and we move it around and do other things to it, it will always be negative to positive infinity. I'm going to write that here. Okay, no matter where it is. Um, this cubing function is continuous. Okay, there are no breaks in the graph at all. Um, the basic one that we're looking at here is also an odd function. Okay, it's got symmetry about the origin. Okay. And on occasion, although this one doesn't, 
So we'll write it this way. We'll say can have minimum or maximum values. Okay, this one does not, um, but it is possible sometimes you have cubing functions if they've got more terms than just this basic one that come up, back down, back up. Sometimes they look like that uh, as we have seen before. The next of our basic functions called the reciprocal function, also sometimes called a rational function. Call it a rational function because its function looks like a ratio. Its function looks like a fraction. Okay, this is a fraction bar right there. Now, some characteristics about this reciprocal or rational function. It's domain and range. Well, this one's finally, the, the first one we see that's not a continuous function. So it's domain and range are going to reflect that. Negative infinity to zero, zero to infinity are both of them. Okay. In other words, the domain goes from left to right, um, negative infinity to infinity, but it skips zero right there in the middle. Same thing happens with the range. It comes from negative infinity as it goes down all the way up to positive infinity, but it skips zero right there in the middle. Okay. Now that domain and range is for this basic function. If uh, the function were moved around, of course that would be different. It could be different. Okay, the reciprocal function is not continuous. Okay, it will have breaks in the continuity, uh, and it always will. There will always be um, some sort of break. And in fact, let's add to this, kind of related to this, it has asymptotes. Okay. It will have vertical asymptotes, or this particular graph, at x equals zero and horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Again, that's for this graph. Those asymptotes can change, and when they change, because the graph has changed, the domain and range have also changed. Okay. Um, let's see, what else can we say about this particular graph? We can say that it is an odd function. Okay, it's got symmetry about the origin. This one does. They don't all, but this one does. Um, and it doesn't have any minimum or maximum values as it goes down forever, up forever. There, there's no min or max here to deal with. Next we have the square root function. It is the inverse function to the squaring function, uh, or partial inverse. Uh, when we get to inverse functions later in more depth, we can kind of talk about that, uh, I suppose. Uh, but it's our square root function. It's kind of like half a parabola turned on its side. We're lacking the other half, which would be down here below the x-axis. Um, as if that part was there, it wouldn't pass a vertical line test. It wouldn't be a function. Um, its domain and range are both 0 comma infinity. That can of course change if this graph function were moved around, um, but for this it's 0 to infinity. It's important to note that 0 is a physical endpoint. Okay? It doesn't go beyond that. Okay? This graph is continuous. Um, I'll add it's continuous on its domain. It's not continuous for all real numbers because it doesn't go over to these negative real numbers, but for its domain 0 to infinity it's continuous there. There's no breaks from 0 to infinity is what I mean by that.
um, has no asymptotes, has no symmetry, it's not even or odd. Um, this one does have, um, we'll just put it like this, can have, or I suppose we should say will have, a minimum or maximum value. This one has a minimum value right here where we started. It's never max though because it keeps going up forever. The next two functions are ones that you would have seen near the middle to end of a Algebra 2 course or a second year Algebra course that generally precedes this one. Uh, the first one is our exponential function and for the basic exponential function we've given the um, natural base e so we're looking at e to the x and it's this nice smooth curve from left to right. Uh, this exponential function has domain negative infinity to infinity range is zero to infinity. Uh, do note how I wrote the range zero with the rounded parenthesis. The graph, although it gets down real, real close to zero for a y value, it never actually touches the x-axis. So that's intentionally made rounded. Okay? That range will, of course, change if the graph is moved around somewhere else. But for this one, that's the range. Um, it is a continuous function. Hey, it is continuous everywhere. Uh, it does not have symmetry, so it's not even or odd. It does not have minimum or maximum values. Um, so, so that's really it. it. It can be increasing as shown here. It could be decreasing if it came down like this. So it could kind of be either of that. Um, but domain, you know, some constants, it's always this is its domain. It's always a continuous function. Oh, one other thing about it, I nearly left off. Um, it does have asymptotes. Uh, it has a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Of course, if it was shifted up or down, that horizontal asymptote could change, but it does have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Um, the value of the range right here does correspond to this value of zero, so that's not a coincidence. Next, we look at the logarithmic function, uh, or specifically uh, the natural logarithmic function. It is the inverse of the e to the x function that we just talked about. Um, because it's the inverse, uh, it has a lot of the same characteristics, just the values have kind of been flip-flopped. Uh, for example, the domain and range of this function are just the reverse of what they were for the exponential function. This is zero to infinity. This is negative infinity, positive infinity. Okay. Uh, it is continuous I'm going to add as we've seen in the past on its domain it's continuous uh, you know, it's not continuous at zero or at negative one, negative two, negative three it's not continuous out here but where it is drawn it is continuous um, it has asymptote and just like the exponential function and the domain range this has been flip-flopped um, whereas the exponential one had a horizontal asymptote this has a vertical asymptote at x equals zero of course that can change if the graph moves 